Next on the show, we welcome a candidate for supervisor in Summit Township, John Griffin. Good morning, John. Good morning, Bart. Hi, Andy. How are you? Good. Welcome to the show. Why do you want to be Summit Township supervisor? That's a great question. Well, public service has been a big deal for our family. I was on the Jackson City Commission as an elected official, and uh, actually when Jim Dunn was thinking about retiring, I thought maybe I'd run for supervisor, but you know, Todd Edmonds was running, Mike Way was running, and I had uh, lost the three-way primary, came in third for state rep, and I said, eh, I, I need to learn more about the, how things mm -hmm. run anyway, so uh, I declined to run, and uh, I backed Todd, and I got on the board as a trustee, mm -hmm. I ran as a trustee instead, and uh, I, I, Jim Dunn was my neighbor, um, you know, he asked me to do the Fixed Summit Road campaign, ran mm -hmm. that, uh, and we got all the roads fixed and everything, he put me on the planning commission, and I met with him and I said, two issues I wanted to know something about. I says, where are we at in lead pipes? Because that's a huge expense for mm -hmm. municipalities who have old pipes. Mm -hmm. He says, we're pretty much past the lead uh, era when we were, houses were built, so we don't have a lot of lead issue. I said, where's okay. the pension fund? He says, well, we're about 60% funded. And I said, what? Summit Township? You know, Summit Township's pretty lean and run well. And, and he says, yeah, he says, we've done a little bit of fixes. He says, but that's the one thing. He says, I just couldn't get the board to, to, to go much farther. And he says, but you've got to stay on that. He says, because, it, you know, long term, it's just going to eat you up out there. So, so John, what is the, the pension fund? Who gets the pension? And well, and everybody, including board members. Okay. Um, it, I understand I've done a lot of research. It was first put in the early 90s. And uh, they, they, at that point, they brought in, they selected MERS. Uh, which is the Michigan Employee Retirement System, Municipal mm -hmm. Employees Retirement System. Mm -hmm. And uh, the board uh, put themselves in it. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it was, everybody was getting a defined benefit at that point with a 2.5 multiplier uh, times years of service and uh, um, your final three years. And uh, about 2017, they, they were able to get, they put the non-union new hires and the board new hires on the hybrid system, which was about a 40% reduction in pension, but then a 5% match for a 401k. Mm -hmm. But it's still, when they did that, the, the debt was about $6 million. And now it's $9 million. And we, we've got a new report, it's probably maybe slightly less, because last year equities did pretty well. Uh, that report came out maybe about a week ago. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen a copy yet. But um, so we, we did some things at his township that helped, but I think it's helped slow the growth in the debt. Um, so $9 million, we've got a $5.3 million budget. Uh, it's, it's hard to sustain that. We have to contribute about a million a year into the pension fund. And last year it went up from 27% of payroll to 30%. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, salary increases were 4%. So we had about 7% increase. Salaries, health insurance costs, for uh, the year went up 12%, mm -hmm. but our revenues go up about 2%. So we ran about $132,000 deficit in this year, current year. We just got our bills. And I look at mine and I, I, you know, Summit collects taxes. Most of the taxes you pay out at Summit Township are for other entities, schools, or the bulk of it, and other levels of government. So last year, and the, it was due in February, the winter taxes, I paid $133 to Summit Township on the two millages that we have for operating. Now, 132 and change, so let's say 133,000. To make up that deficit, we would need 100 more residences paying as much taxes as I'm paying, 1,000, not 100, 1,000 more mm -hmm. residences paying that amount to erase that deficit. It doesn't sound like a lot, but our tax base is pretty small. Mm -hmm. Most of the money comes from revenue sharing. So we, we in the year before, we were 90,000 underfunded. We can't continue to have a deficit that grows, you know, expenses are going up twice mm -hmm. as fast as revenues. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. And if you don't attack it now, it's going to get even worse. Would you eliminate new pensions? Obviously, there's probably yeah. not much you can do on right. the other pensions. I'd, I'd like, you know, ideally, you know, the state of Michigan went to uh, defined contribution 30 years ago. Uh, Consumers Energy 25 years ago. Uh, U of M Hospitals, you know, one of the most progressive employers. They're a 10% match on a 401k. My son works there, that's mm -hmm. why I know that. They got rid of that a long time ago, about 10 years ago, that's mm -hmm. when he hired in. Uh, our own auditor told me, he says, yes, defined benefit plans are unsustainable. GM got rid of, you know, they almost mm -hmm. went bankrupt because of it. So we, we should, whatever people were hired at, uh, you know, as, as far as vesting, 
if they've, I mean, if they've vested, they're in. I say that board members should be out of the defined benefit system if they have not vested yet. Mm -hmm. If they're vested, we have a legal obligation. We can't get out of it, even if we wanted to. Um, and then new hires go to defined contribution. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, the fire department is negotiated, and uh, the city of Jackson, same local, went to a hybrid system for their off, uh, new hires in the 2016-2017 time frame. Um, that would help save a lot. And, and if, if, if they are judicious and put in the money to their 401k and let it grow and let it grow, um, they'll have a significant amount of money. And if, if you happen to, you know, whenever you die, that money goes to your heir. So pension you can't pass on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not anything that's being, not being done elsewhere. As a matter of fact, a, def, a hybrid plan is more generous than the county. I mean, we've got the most generous pay and benefit package in all of Jackson mm -hmm. County. Uh, last year, uh, the big controversy in the township was the asphalt plant, yeah. where we did have board meetings uh, mm -hmm. pa packed packed with uh, citizens. Did that spawn a lot of the interest in running for this uh, for the township seat? No, I think uh, that kind of made me wonder what the heck am I thinking of when I'm running for supervisor? <laughs> I think people are confused about that whole issue in general. Well, right? uh, <laughs> you know, uh, coming from the oil and gas industry and, and working on a, a number of issues like pipelines and. Uh, refineries and things like that. Um, the oil and gas has been tarred and feathered. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing to think of that. They're really bad. Everybody wanted the road fixed when we did the roads. Wilby's came in with a, a proposal and uh, you know it's been an industrial site for over 30 years, maybe closer to 40. And uh, they met the requirements that were in place at the time. They were able to get a permit. So, you know, they have a legal right to use their property. It's called property rights, which is what the country was founded upon. If we lose property rights, we're gonna lose our country. So th th things went through and a lot of uh, consternation about it and it, it, a lot of folks just didn't want it, period. And Wilby's withdrew, you know, there's so much controversy uh, that they withdrew their application. Mm -hmm. And the board, it, uh, at the time directed the planning commission, and I'm on the planning commission to review our statute or our ordinance that help, deals with that. And Al Hooper did a wonderful job researching. He's on the, he's the vice chair of the planning commission. Most counties or, or municipalities that have asphalt plants have setback requirements that are greater. We didn't have one. Mm. And so uh, we decided to go with a, um, I would have preferred 500, but 750 is where we ended up. After they withdrew the application, we passed a moratorium. And if, if they would have pursued their application, we would have had to apply the rules that were in place at the time. So uh, with the new setback requirement, that location is not viable. It would not fit. Uh, so uh, actually that kind of went away. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of the hard feelings have gone away on the part of some of the residents. Mm -hmm. uh, they s continue to do concrete crushing there and they have a permit for that and there's some that are very unhappy about that. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, you know, NIMBY issues or issues like that just pop up everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and that one, it was a no-win situation, but it ended up, it's not gonna be an asphalt plant, so uh, they should be happy. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wilbys aren't happy because of the whole thing that happened like that. So. Not a lot of happiness on that mm -hmm. one, Mark. Mm -hmm. So you're, uh, you'll be out and uh, people can see you out on the campaign trail? I know yeah, going I was going to go yesterday, but I had to yeah. run out to Lowe's because <laughs> our, our, we, we have a crawl space and got another oh, pump. Oh, boy. It yeah. was, it was, it's still pumping today, a full flow out. A lot, of, we lot had, of water. We had about that much water. Our backyard was a pool like a river. I've never seen it in our backyard like that. That's amazing. Well, we we'll appreciate you coming in. Good yeah, luck. Thank you. The uh, election. Uh, August. August 6th. 6th. August 6th. Absentee ballots came in the mail, was it yesterday? No, yesterday. They're out. And I'll be done. My flyer came in the same time. That was what we tried. <laughs> Running for uh, Summit Township Supervisor John Griffin. More of the morning show after this.